Welcome back to Live What You Love. Today we're going to be taking these 12 bamboo arrow shafts and turn them into some really great traditional arrows. First thing that you're going to want to do is kind of get your setup going. So we've got a grain scale, we've got the, the knocks, we've got the arrowheads. We're going to be using three different uh, arrowheads. A lot of these I want to be field tips so that I can practice with them. We also have three of these Kodiak broadheads. Some of these have been broken just due to while I'm on the hunt or something, I'll shoot an animal and it'll run for a little bit and break the arrowhead or something like this. But we've got three Kodiak broadheads and then we've got two of these other broadheads that are kind of like a broadhead field tip hybrid. Uh, but I'd also like to put those two on. First thing you're gonna wanna do is grab your calipers. Now I don't have a battery in these or anything, I just need something to be able to hold a fixed measurement. You're gonna take these shafts one by one and line them all up and keep them in order for how you line them up. Measure the right side first and just kind of sink the calipers down until you're, you're at the walls and then see if you can go to the other side. I can't, which means this side is thicker. So I want my thicker side to be where I put my arrow head. So for me, that's always on the left. So now that one's done. You're going to repeat the same process for the other 11 arrows. So just measure one side, see if it'll fit on the other. If it doesn't, it means that's your bigger side and that's where your arrow head's going to go. Just lay that down in front of you. These arrows were ordered off of Three Rivers Archery. Now they are 60 to 65 spine. So for wood arrows, it's not like for compound. So for compound, you're used to hearing numbers like 300, 350 spine, 500 spine. And that's a measure of the deflection. So the way that that works is, I haven't done that one yet, so I'm just gonna set it down so I don't get kind of screwed up. But the way that you measure the, the spine of an arrow is you take two points 28 inches apart, you put the arrow shaft across those two support points, and then you put around about a two pound weight in the center, and you measure the deflection. Then you multiply by a thousand to get your spine number. So if it deflects downwards by half an inch, that's a 500 spine arrow. That's why a 300 spine arrow is much stiffer than a 500. Uh, with wood arrows, it's a bit different. So the spine is actually very, very similar to whatever the poundage of your bow is gonna be. The bows that I make tend to be equal with if they don't exceed kind of other modern alternatives for the traditional world. So because of that, I tend to use spines rating 60 to 65, higher if I can find that. But 60 to 65, I do build most of my bows to be relatively center shot anyways. So they're a bit more forgiving. But what we're using today is 60 to 65. When you buy these arrows off Three Rivers, they're gonna have a mark on here that says 60 to 65. And if you read it, just like you read a book from left to right, normally the left side will be the head of your arrow. Let's do this one just to check. So that side, this one fits. So the heavier side of this arrow is actually right here. So this is a backwards one. Let's check another one. Uh, we just finished that up. This is why it's good to check with your calipers. So if you're reading this like a book, 60 to 65, most of the time, if you line it up like that, the left-hand side will be larger. If it's 60 to 65, you see how these two are backwards? That's because those two arrows, when we measured them with the calipers, that side is actually smaller and that side is bigger. So we had to flip them. So always check with your calipers because sometimes uh, the labeling does not get it right. For the majority of the time, it will be correct. But sometimes there are exceptions, so check. Now, the next step is gonna be to cut these, but you need to figure out the length at which you need to cut them. So first, I need to show you guys how to test your draw length, and then what additional amount of length beyond your draw length that you'll want to add to your traditional arrows. This is my hunting bow. I just have an old arrow. I don't have any fletchings on this or anything. This is kind of like a testing arrow. I don't even have a field tip on it. What you're gonna to wanna to do is put a couple pieces of tape around it. Depending on how well you know your draw length, 
If you know it really well, just do plus or minus an inch to what you think your draw length is and then pull it back. If you do not know your draw length well, I would do from, put a mark at 25, at 26, 27, 28, uh, up to 30, and then pull it back and just see where, where you get to. We measured from right there, the throat of the knock, that little drop in point, all the way up to these three marks. I got one at 28, 29, and 30. We're just gonna warm it up real quick. Hmm. Just learned something new about myself. Um, I have been trying to transition between being an instinctual shooter, which I've always done, just the types of animals that I've hunted and things. Um, it's always been 15 yards and in. And you can, if you're gonna shoot instinct and you're shooting 10, 15 yards, you can hit a tennis ball like pretty consistently. It's relatively easy after you put in a little bit of practice. But to get out to distances like 30, 40, 50, 60 with a traditional bow, you, you cannot rely on instinct. Well, you're gonna have to be either a gap shooter or an aimer of some type. So I'm trying to transition to, I wouldn't say I'm full gap yet, but I am definitely aiming quite a bit more and I'm seeing some very positive results. If you've never given aiming uh, as a shooting style a fair shot, I, I would try it. I mean, I was, the other day I took this bow out with the homemade arrows, right? So we made some of those privet Lugestrum ones the other day. I was taking that bow out from, I think it was 28 yards. And the center of the, the target that I shoot at, it's one of those high roller targets, the red one that you guys have seen me use. I mean, the center of that thing is three, four inches across. And I hit it multiple times from 30 yards. That was never something I would have been able to do relying on instinct. From 30 yards, I've never been able to just pull back and hit uh, the size of like a baseball. You know, I've never been able to do that from 30 consistently. And with aiming, I'm starting to be able to. It's something that I just recently tried to transition into like the past couple of weeks. It was partially inspired by using a compound bow because using the compound, it's super fun to shoot distance. Uh, that kind of opened up a whole new world. So being able to shoot those longer shots and kind of see that arrow and the trajectory, just see it glide through the air, especially when you have a lighted knock, I kind of fell in love with that. So I would like to be able to do the same thing with my traditional setup. So I'm gearing my aiming style, my shooting style, everything uh, back towards those longer distances. Long story short, that was a lot of words for, uh, this is why my draw length recently changed. So it used to be 30 because I would pull back to kind of the back of my jawline. That's a lot of invested time and a lot of effort to make all these arrows. So you want them to be optimized for your bow, for your shooting style, everything. You want to personalize the crap out of them. Take pride in your work. All right, this is 28 and a half. Let's see if we hit the tape. Okay. I do. Um, I barely hit that tape that time. And that was, I was able to, I obviously want to pull back more, but I know that if I pull back more uh, to my usual spot, it's gonna be way less accurate and I'll kind of have to go back to that instinctual shooting and I'm trying to get away from that and become more of an aimer. So I am giving up some draw length, but 30 inch draw length was a bit excessive to begin with. So I think using 28, um, this is 28 and a half and I hit it with my finger and went a little past it just on a short draw. That's what I'm calling my aiming draw because it, it is a short draw for me. Instead of 28 and a half, I think I am gonna go 29 and a quarter or maybe just 29 for the length of these. I think 29 even would do. And try, just double check, right at 29. Yeah, I think 29 is perfect for us. Set this stuff aside, we don't need it anymore. Always gotta remind myself, put this back in the power pack. So whenever I lose it, I can't practice, which sucks. So at this stage, we know all of our fatter ends of the arrows is to my left. We've checked out with calipers. We have everything lined up, right? It's partially why we have this two by four here so that we have a, a plane right here that all these can run on. 
so they'll all be lined up. We used the calipers to do that first part, and then we used kind of our, our toy arrow that we put marks on and a piece of tape to find the perfect draw length, which is gonna determine our arrow length, right? Something that I want y'all to think about is that, so the, always keep in mind which side's the heavy one when you, when you pick it up, right? So to the left is my bigger side, which means to the right is my smaller side and where my knocking point is gonna be. So if this is my knocking point, that is exceptionally small, right? So the knot can kind of wobble all throughout there. And I'll show you how to take care of that. I have a good way. So when we, when you cut it, try to keep in mind, you don't really want to have to shave off wood to get these knocks on, but you also, you don't want them to be so loose like this one is that you can put it on and literally shake it back and forth. You don't really want that either. You want these to be just past where your draw length is. You don't want a whole bunch of meat sticking out. You don't want to draw back and have your supporting hand past that hand to have six inches arrow out in front of you. Cause then there's way more weight on that arrow, which is going to slow things down. Uh, it's going to increase the amount of inertia on that front when the back of the arrow is trying to accelerate. I'll explain that more when we get more into it. Arrows are really kind of paradoxical and cool. So special note, when you add an arrow knock, it adds a quarter inch. If it's a glue on uh, knock, it doesn't fit. This isn't like an insert for wood stuff. It, it all fits over the outer circumference. So this is like a, an outer fit and it adds a quarter inch. Now, if we do a field tip, how much, how much length is that gonna add? But when you add a field point, you add a half inch. When you add a knock, you add a quarter inch. I know that if I have a 29 inch arrow, I'm not gonna draw to the end of that. I get right up to the end when, when I anchor kind of more forwards for that, that aiming style. So we're gonna take the 29 inch draw length and we're gonna draw that onto here. So we have marks here, which we're gonna cut all this off. And then we have a mark here where we're gonna cut quarter inch off the head. I like to not do the cuts with a hacksaw or anything like that because if you use a hacksaw, you're gonna go through, go through, go through. You're being real careful. You get to the bottom. If you drag in the wrong way, you can pull up some of the grain of the bamboo on the bottom side. So instead of doing it that way, uh, that's pretty high risk. I like to do it this way, where I use a drill. And just keep in mind that whatever part of this wood that you put into kind of the teeth of the drill, and then you clamp it down, could potentially suffer some compression damage. So because of that, we're gonna kinda of use our heads for this next part. So we know we're getting rid of this, and we know we're getting rid of this. This little part here wouldn't be very good to put in the, the drill because it might, the teeth of the drill might have more depth than the quarter inch we're gonna take off. So we're not gonna start with this end. This is the head. We're gonna start with the tail. And we have, where's my mark? So from here to here, this is all trash. So our, our plan is to cut right there uh, in the end. But what I want you to do is not do that cut first. I want you to put this end in the drill. And the reason for that is because once that's in, we can do the quarter inch cut at the end. And then after we do that quarter inch cut, we're gonna put our field tip on. And then once the field tip's on, the wood is then protected from the teeth of the drill. So once the field tip is on on this end, we're gonna flip it around, stick the field tip in this end, and then we're gonna do our tail cut, and then we'll put our knock on. But that's kind of the, the thought process. That's what works best for me. Uh, let's get going. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna take a clamp, I'm gonna open it up real wide, and I'm gonna stick it on the trigger of this drill. Uh, while you stick this on the trigger, hold your arrow shaft or else the arrow shaft will break. So stick this on and then you have two working hands instead of just one hand. After this is on there, we're gonna pick the grinder up. So the arrow shaft is gonna be rotating and the grinder wheel, the cutting wheel on the grinder is gonna be rotating. So we're gonna do the cut with that. Then we'll glue the field tip on, flip it around, same thing. So it's easy as that. It goes real smooth. 
it's almost burning through the wood instead of cutting it. But you end up with a really nice end like that. And that's kind of what I like to see. And then I'm just gonna, the little edges that you see, some of these little frizzy parts, I'm just gonna take some very, very mild sandpaper and go from outer circumference into the center of the arrow and just kind of rotate the arrow around as you're dragging that sandpaper across. So this is, this looks like 320. Yeah, this is 320 grit. So just hold the arrow, drag it at an angle like this. Just very, very quickly, very soft. You're not actually trying to take anything off. You're just cleaning it up. So just like that, in that small, small amount of time, now we have pretty much a perfect uh, cut. And that's very, very ready for our field tip. So now, do we have an issue here? The field tip sits on there pretty nicely, gotta say. I would like it to sit just a baby bit more tightly. Um, so how are we gonna accomplish this? For this part, I feel like there could be some controversy or some people with differing opinions. So I'm gonna show you two ways that I like to use sometimes. If I want this to be slightly tighter, like a, a tighter fit, you see how there's like barely any wobble. It's not nearly as bad as the, the knocking point on the tail, but I don't like that wobble and I want that gone. So the first way that I do that, you can put this, put the field tip on, get a Sharpie, and then you can mark around kind of where your field tip ends on the shaft of that arrow, right? So just get your Sharpie, go around in a circle, just mark that entire outer circumference, okay? Now that's done, Sharpie goes back in the power pack so that we don't lose it. I'm trying to say that out loud so I like reinforce it to myself. Okay, so that's what we're looking at now. Uh, we just have a ring going around the outside. I want you to take some super glue and kind of coat the outside. So this is not uh, archery glue, this is just gel super glue. And the cap of mine is all sorts of jacked up. So I just kind of open it and use the cap like like so. Just get a decent amount on the tip, okay? Like a pretty thin amount actually. Just get it everywhere. And then hurry for this next part, grab some sawdust and just kind of sprinkle it over the top of where that super glue was just put on there. And then just do the same thing a couple times. Now at this point, this is what we're looking at. So we have some sawdust around the outside. Let's see how tight our fit is. Yeah, that's much, much better. Uh, you can see that if I push that on, it might even make a friction fit as is. I'm gonna apply a generous amount of super glue. Sometimes I use just normal super glue instead of the Victory Bond. Uh, this will be one of those instances. Just grab it and then twist it, the super glue around. Make sure you're coating the whole thing. I'll push it in. And then whenever this hardens up, it will not have any sway because of that sawdust that we added to increase that uh, diameter of that, that shaft. There's your tip. I don't wobble at all. It's not moving. The field tip is metal. So that's, that's a protective coating around the shaft, right? So we're gonna put this metal part back in our drill, clamp it down with the drill teeth, and then we're gonna cut off this tail, which we have a marking down here for the 29 inches. If you have a chuck key, just use that to tighten it down. And we're gonna turn this thing on, make sure when you turn it on, you are holding your arrow so it doesn't just flail around and break. We've got our clamp here. We're gonna clamp this onto the drill. Make sure as you're clamping the trigger down, you are holding the shaft. After that's clamped, you're gonna have two free hands. You can, well kind of, one of your hands is used for holding this. But then you can transition from holding the arrow and supporting it with your hands. Sometimes I like to kind of grip it in between uh, my ribs and the inner part of my arm. That works as well. And then you have two hands to help you support uh, the end of the arrow and the grinder. Boom. So field tip still intact, zero damage. Got the arrow trimmed to length right at 29. See how I kind of scorched earth it? 
I like how it does that. It just kind of singes everything, and to me, that's going to help protect it. Kind of make like a very, very planar surface for everything else to kind of bond onto. I really like that. You take your very mild sandpaper, just do some light work from the outside back in towards the center, like we talked about. Okay, perfect. Now at this point, we're getting to be about the time to put the arrow knock on. If you can see, we're still having that same issue. This knock is crazy, crazy. Uh, there's way too much movement inside there. So I'm gonna show you the second way that I like to kind of fix this issue. So you could do the sawdust thing that we did for the, the tip of the arrow. You could do that again. Just coat it in glue, drip some sawdust on there. It adds some extra width to that diameter. You can also do a much easier version to some of you guys, y'all are gonna freak out and be like, no, you can't do that, but it works great, shut up. Take a piece of tape, stick it on your board, cut off the crap ends. Now you're gonna make little ribbons. And just make a, like a grid pattern like a Hershey's bar. Just do a couple wraps on the end with that, uh, with that tape. If you do two right side by side, uh, I'll show you a trick. Okay, just did some wraps on there. This is the tail. Uh, let's see how the knock fits now. Okay, that's way better. Uh, if, I, if I squeeze that on, I'd be able to get that on, but I wanna do one thing first. Put it back in your drill over here. Put, put the field tip back in and just sand over this very quickly. It almost heats it up so it becomes kind of like a joining compound instead of just tape. It's very, it's actually really cool. This is what it looks like after you've put it back in the drill and just lightly sanded it. Um, it is kind of hot, but it gets rid of, like I couldn't find the seam if I wanted to now to unwrap it. It just kind of joins everything together and makes more of like a joining compound instead of just a piece of tape. Now what you're gonna do is take the archery bond, you're gonna coat the outside of this and then squeeze that knock on the end. The next step that we gotta do uh, to finish this thing up is just fletchings. You can do this by hand. I have done it by hand in the past. Uh, using a fletching jig makes things go way faster. It's definitely worth like the 45 bucks. So as you can see, I've got this one here. All you do is you put the arrow in and there's a, there's a little groove down at the bottom so that your knock sits in a certain way. The arrow will sit there. There's a magnetic strip here and then there's a clamp. So this is just a normal like H-E-B bag clamp, you know, for like a bag of chips, pretty much. Except it has a magnet here, and there's a ruler on the front face, right here. So that you can get a consistent uh, distance between your knock and where you put your fletchings on the shaft. I like to go one inch up is where I put the fletchings. That, that should look pretty good. I like to do a dry run as well. Um, we might need to go a little higher than one inch up on this one just because of that tape that we put on. Uh, we'll probably do an inch and a quarter up. So we've got our chip clip here with the magnetic strip and the ruler. It's literally all it is. I have my fletching set for a two degree offset to the right. You just wanna set these fletchings in here so that they're all a consistent distance away from the base of your ruler. So this is like my zero point. And then there it goes one, two, three, so on and so forth. It's just standard ruler. I have the base of this fletch right here. So you can see it kind of sticking out to the side. I have the base of this at one and a quarter inches. Make sure that every single one that you do is one and a quarter inches. So just get it in there, make sure it's seated nicely. And then you're gonna take some Victory Bond. You're gonna coat this and then put it on. Got our Victory Bond here. We're just gonna coat it very lightly. Does not take a whole lot. Just do a little bead, okay? And keep in mind, this viscosity is extremely low. It's very similar to water. Now, the way I like to put this on is kind of walk it in. So I, I do the bottom first, so where my zero is. I like to feel the magnet next. So there's the magnet. I'm, on, I'm adhered to the magnet. 
And then I, I do the back or the bottom, and then I kind of get the, the top as well. And I like to push the bottom of the arrow up towards the fletch as well, or the fletching. Fletch is a verb. And then after you hold it for like 10 seconds, you can kind of just let it go and it'll do its, its normal thing. So if you can see here, there's no gaps in between there. So uh, I'm digging these three rivers shafts. So it's been uh, maybe 30 seconds and this stuff dries very, very quickly. It might not be 100% cured yet, but you don't have to wait for it to be cured to rotate it. So I like, I kind of very lightly will pull up on this thing and just kind of track it out the, the plane of the magnet. After you have that first one in, keep it seated in here and you're just gonna rotate this bottom part and it rotates 120 degrees. So you know, like a circle is 360. So I'm doing three fletchings. I like three fletch, I don't like four. So I like the three, so it's 120 new fletch, 120 new fletch, and then you're done. So I'm gonna go put a second fletching in here real quick and then we'll be back. So we've got the second one on. I'm just gonna undo this victory bond here. Do a little bead. I'll show you how light the bead is. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay. Now I like to keep it moving until I'm ready uh, to put it on just to make sure that that victory bond is distributed over the entire plane of that fletching. And again, the way that I put these on, I put the tail end down, I match it up to the magnet, and then I just kind of wedge it on. Okay. And then push a little bit whenever you first get it on, and then just let it sit for about 30 seconds. All right, we just put the third fletching on. We've waited the 30 seconds. I'm gonna show you guys again just one more time. When you undo this, do it slowly, just in case some of the glue is adhering the chip clip to your fletching. Uh, you need to be wary of that. So just kind of slow for this part. And then as soon as this is open, so this, this part of the chip clip is no longer contacting the fletching, then just rotate outwards and follow that magnetic path. Take it out carefully. Boom. And that is a fletched arrow. And it does look pretty beautiful, if I do say so myself. And the fact that these are bamboo traditional style arrows and that we have, I know it kind of throws things off having some duct tape on there, but it doesn't really look like duct tape. It actually looks like some kind of primitive tar or like pine tar or something like that, or dried clay. That's why I like doing it like this. I think it kind of fits in with the aesthetic of the arrows. If you're curious, if you look down the arrow, they're all two degree to the right helix. Uh, that's the kind of fletching jig that I purchased. Mine is kind of old and busted at this point, but you can probably still see it. So when you put this in, you see how the fletching jig, it's not a straight line. It actually has some of that helix built in. One of the things that determines spine, well, it's actually the determinant of spine. It's like the definition. I want to explain it to you guys so you guys kind of see the purpose of this arrow and how it will potentially change the way we make the other 11, or if we're just gonna make all of them this way. So I told you guys this is a 60 to 65 spine arrow. Wooden arrows are spined based on a different numbering system than compounds. So if it sounds weird to you, that's why. With wooden arrows, generally the spine will be very similar to the draw weight of the bow if it's well made. If you have a very fast bow, you may need to up the spine numbers, right? So if you have like a recurved uh, bow versus a flat bow, and they both shoot 50 pounds, the recurved bow, because recurves are faster, may need a 60 to 65 pound uh, arrow spine. Now, when you're determining spine, what the hell is spine, right? What does that even mean? Picture a wall, right? So we've got our arrow sitting here. And picture this is a plane, and you've got two points sticking out of the wall. So my two fingers. Picture that those are 28 inches apart, sticking out of the wall. And then in the center of your arrow, between those 28 inches, so 14 from this and 14 from this, you're gonna hang a weight. And when you do that, the arrow is gonna deflect slightly, right? 
So the higher the spine number on wooden arrows, it means there's less deflection. Uh, on compound stuff, it's actually kind of uh, the opposite. The higher the number with compound uh, arrows and compound shooting, that means that it's deflecting more. But with these, you can see it doesn't deflect very much. And I'm putting a pretty good amount of pressure on there. Now, the thing with spine is that with wood, even if you make it a dowel rod lookalike, it's not always gonna bend the same. So if I bend it this way, it could have more or less bend than if I rotate 180 degrees and I try to bend it this way. Now these are prefab, so they should be pretty, uh, pretty doggone on and relatively even, and the fact that they're bamboo. Bamboo, all the fibers run directly parallel. There's no cross-linking or anything like with other types of wood. So they are gonna be more consistent spine-wise if you rotate the arrow around in a circle. You're gonna feel very similar bend. Now, if you were working with a different type of wood, I would actually make a jig. I would get a two by four, put two nails in it, uh, 28 inches apart, stick your arrow on it, stick a two, two pound weight in the center, see the deflection, and then as that weight is still hanging from there, I would rotate this thing around in a circle and see if that deflection point raises or lowers. And then wherever the lowest point is, so the maximum deflection of that arrow, that is normally where you want your colored fletching to come in. That's just common practice. The reason that we did not do that with these is because that's an extra step and that takes a lot of extra time. So because these are uh, bamboo shafts, they should already be relatively similar. And it, it feels very similar to me when I, when I flex it in all directions. It's not like it has a huge give and then you rotate 180 degrees and it's like stiff as can be. It's not like that. So because we made this arrow without using that jig, uh, I'd like to shoot it first, see how it behaves through my hunting bow. And if it shoots just perfectly and I'm aiming dead on, there's no point for that extra step. I'm a big tester. If there's added benefit, then I will do so. So I'm gonna take this arrow and go shoot it. And then I'll, I'll be back and tell you the verdict. Okay, so in the garage, we just talked about the importance of the arrow spine and potentially wanting to make that jig so that we could actually measure the spine for ourselves. I've thought of an easier way to do the test to see how significant the placement of that one odd colored fletch is which normally marks the greatest amount of deviation on that spine jig that we were talking about. So first, we're gonna put the arrow in and you can only knock this in two ways, right? So you can knock it in like this or like this. And now doing this will be a good measure of the static and dynamic spine, more, more so the dynamic spine. But with this fletch facing completely out, let's just take a shot and we'll see how close we can get. Let's go walk up and see. Okay, so not perfect. I pushed it just slightly, but a decent shot. Let's walk back and do the others. Now this time, instead of putting this knock on with this fletch in facing 90, we're just gonna flip it around. Clamp it in. So now it is 180 degrees difference so that odd fletch is facing this way now and i want to see if this makes a difference and how it ends up on the target because as you know spine doesn't really dictate up and down as much as left or right if you're just a, a very very brief summary on spine if your arrows are under spined they're going to go too far to the right if your arrows are over spined they're going to go too far to the left so after switching that around let's take a shot and we'll see see how it looks now all right let's go see okay so that's it's a good shot it's, it's about the exact same as the other because the other one i felt like i i pushed it slightly just to make sure uh, i'm gonna switch it back and we'll do one more shot all right, so just so you guys see, I am switching it back. So that odd fletch is pointing to the left again. So it's 180 from what the last shot was. Let's go see. Okay, so 
kind of this helps support what we were saying so the first shot was the same arrow orientation and the arrow was not here it was here right the second shot was dead center with the arrow flipped 180 and then we flipped it back to the or original starting point and we had just left so that deviation is not due to the spine that's just me kind of swaying a little bit because it's a trad bow and it's hard to shoot but the the long and the short and the kind of the moral of this story is you don't really have to take the time to set up that uh, the spine jig so that you can measure the deviation and then twist it to find maximal deviation and then put the fletch on there. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you order prefab Three Rivers bamboo shafts, these are 33 inches, they come in a pack of 12. Uh, you literally just cut the ends, get the knock on, get the field tip on, put the fletchings on, you're good to go. You can fire it any which way. It doesn't even matter which way you knock it on. It's gonna have the same result. All right guys, so the verdict is in. These arrows are awesome. Um, also, it doesn't matter to set up that uh, spine jig. Waste of time. Don't bother doing that if you're getting these uh, prefab from Three Rivers. Uh, they're already very well to spec. They're very well rounded. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of these. So I'm just gonna make the other 11 real quick. And then when we get done, we'll take you outside and we'll do some shooting. So we ended up with eight fully finished and fletched arrows. Uh, I'm very excited to take them out in the backyard. We're gonna see how they shoot. We're gonna see how well I can group them. I haven't shot any of these yet except for that first one. So I'm pretty stoked. Let's go. It's about 17 yards to where I'm shooting from. I'm gonna do a couple practice shots just in the ground so I can make sure they're going where I want so I don't hit the fence and screw up one of my arrows. Those things are moving. And they fly so nice. Pretty damn close. All right, Let's see if we can drill this thing real quick. Wow, it is mega dark. On oh, sounded all right. I'm having a hard time seeing them. You're gonna probably be surprised when we go down there. I'll probably just do three for this last group. Three or five. It's getting real dark, guys. Um, I have no idea where the three of those went. Let's go check. Not perfect, but for barely having visibility, 